Hello, I'm Kainton, the Tech Pro, and today's lesson will be equivalence checking in software verification and validation. So today we are going to discuss equivalence checking. This is a very interesting topic. It's not as difficult as some think, although it's a little bit theoretical, I must say. We are going to discuss it in about 10 to 15 minutes. So please subscribe, click on the subscribe button down there and then you'll be sure to get updates on new lessons. If you have any topic you want me to discuss and explain, please write it there in the description box and I'm going to respond to you in the next few days. So let's get started. We are going to cover in this lesson these uh, topics I've just listed here. First, we are going to look at what is equivalence checking then we are going to discuss concept on, of internal actions or unobservable actions. Then we now discuss the three types of equivalence. We have the trace equivalence, the strong bisimilarity or the strong bisimulation equivalence. Then we have the weak bisimilarity or the weak bisimulation equivalence. So let's get started with the first item. What is equivalence checking? Equivalence checking actually is a way to define and check similarity between two models. It's, it's applied in software verification because in the cost of verification, you might have to modify something. An example, maybe you have to rewrite an equation and then you have to make sure that the two equations, you've not changed anything. So if you have to change the subject of the formula of an equation, it still ha it's the equation is basically the same, but you need to check. So theoretically speaking, you need to check for two models, usually a labeled transition system to check if they are the same. The question is, can the two uh, models or these two labeled transitions perform successfully the same sequence of actions? If the answer is yes, then they are equivalent. So for now, let's do this exercise. L1, L2, L3, are they equivalent or not? What do you think? Can they do the same thing? Here we have A, B, we have A, C, both of here. But I can tell you that these two, let's see, they are not equivalent. Okay, what of L2 and L3? Do you think they are equivalent? Okay, let's see. Yes, they are equivalent. So how do I come out with the fact that they are equivalent? That is what we are going to discuss today on the equivalence checking. Before then, let's look at uh, determinism, sorry, concept of uh, internal or unobservable actions. Now, if we look at the previous slide, you see this I here. It means internal action. The question now is, what is internal action? They are actions, actually transitions between two states that cannot be seen on the external interface of the model. However, they may affect uh, subsequent actions. So let's examine this. We have Inside the model, we have A, B, we have D, C. But now in the external interface, let me use this pen. In the external interface that is here, we don't have D. So it's hidden, it's called internal action. And is it actually leads to non-determinism when the state of uh, an automata or a label transition system is not uh, determined, that is non-determinism. We'll discuss this at a different, in a different uh, lesson. So here we have outside, we now represent this, represent it as internal action. So the label there, because we don't see it, is hidden, we use internal action. It can be anything, it can even be multiple transitions, we don't know, but that is internal action. Now we have just take note of these four points. Studying a system, the model is considered as a black box, as we showed you in the previous slide. So it means that 
there are internal actions that you may not know. What we consider is just interactions with the environment or external or observable actions. Other hidden interactions are described as non-deterministic. Internal or unobservable actions lead to non-determinism. Just get this around your head. Let's now move to the first one. Don't worry about all of this. I'm going to clarify it in a very uh, simple way. The first type of equivalence is a trace equivalence. When do we say that two models exhibit trace equivalent? That is, if they can successfully perform same sequences of actions beginning from the initial state. Right, so if I'm going to go back to this test we carried out, let's look at this. L1 can perform AC. Can L2 perform AC? No. Sorry, yeah. L1 can perform AC, L2 cannot. L2 can perform C. L1 cannot. Okay, look at L2 and L3. L2 can perform AB, L3 can perform AB, L2 can perform C, L3 can perform C. We'll talk about this later. So looking at this system from outside, we likely somehow we ignore the this internal action here. So let's get back to where we were. So trace equivalence is when two models can successfully perform same sequences of actions beginning from the initial state. So for LTS, a label transition state that has a set of states, actions, transitions, and an initial state, for S0, S1 to Xn, which are actually, which belongs to S, then TRS is a trace equivalence for S, is a set of possible traces that is possible paths that can be reached from S and is defined by this formula. Don't worry about this formula, but if you're interested, maybe you just try to get used to it. It's not too important. Now, two LTS, L1 with initial uh, state L0 and L2 with initial state S prime of zero equivalent if the trace of L0 is equal to the trace of L1. A little bit in this formula we have trace for s is equal to we have this transition here which is remember this is belongs to or is a a, so a member of the set a such so that t is in s and can be reached through this place that is how it can be read i read it again the trace for S is defined as this symbol, which is a member of the set A star, such that T is a, a member of set of uh, the states, set of states, and T can be reached through this. Okay, don't worry about this, but just maybe pause the video and get used to it if you want. Trace equivalence examples. Take your time to look at these two boxes. We have this and we have this. Now, L1 is equivalent to L2 in this box. Why? Because we define all the paths starting from the initial state. We define all the paths for the two. If all the paths are the same, then they are equivalent. Now, trace equivalent throws away, as it were, it throws away internal actions. Take note, because when we look at the next equivalence, we will know that it takes note of internal actions. So we have A, we have AB, we have C, we have A, we have AB, and we have C. So these two exhibit trace equivalence. Now, in this second box, we have AB, we have A, we have AC. Of course, we have an empty set. Let's look at this. We have A, we have AB, we have C. So, not equivalent at all. So, that is why you have 
this. So take some time to look to get used to it. One problem with trace equivalence is sensitivity to deadlock. So one of the uh, tr label transition system may be free of deadlock. That does not mean that the other will be free. One may be susceptible to deadlock. So that is the problem. It's sensitive to deadlock. Let's now look at the next one, strong bisimilarity, also called uh, bisimulation equivalence. Strong bisimulation equivalence. St two LTS exhibit strong bisimulation equivalence if when one LTS performs an action A, then the other will also be able to carry out the same action A in such a way that the final states are again related. This is the formal definition. We have uh, state S, which is also, uh, we also have uh, T in another transition system. We have states S, S prime and T. So we have, we can move from S to S prime through A. And then we have for T, we can move from T to T prime through A, such that at the end, S relates to C to T, and S prime relates to T. Okay, I think it's becoming too theoretical. Let's take an example to clarify this. All right, these two exhibit strong bisimulation equivalence. Why? Because let's take steps through the diagram and see how it relates. First step on L1 is A. At this point, first step on L2 is A. It takes us to this point. All the steps from L2, which is A, takes us to the same point where we can start the same transition again. So we have from here to here, we have B. From this place to this place, we have B, which is the same as this. So what it means is that for every transition, the two comes to exactly the same uh, states, similar states again. So that is what we mean by strong bisimulation equivalence. Now these two are equivalent. What is the some of the details about strong bisimulation equivalence? One, they are said to be symmetric or congruent. They also, uh, it also involves trace equivalence. What it means is that if two relations or two transition diagrams are related by strong bisimulation equivalence, then it means automatically they also exhibit trace equivalence. But unlike trace equivalence, strong bisimulation exhibits same deadlock behavior for both models. So if this one have a, a, is, is a deadlock free, automatically the second one is deadlock free. One problem with strong bisimulation equivalence is its sensitivity to internal actions. It takes notes of internal actions. All right, let's now move to weak bisimulation equivalence. Now, weak bisimulation equivalence is a variant of strong bisimulation equivalence. So I'm not going to give much examples here, but just note that weak bisimulation equivalence is also called observable equivalence. It's a variant of strong bisimulation, but is not sensitive to internal actions without observable effects. So this is more on weak bisimulation equivalence. We have that strong bisimulation equivalence also implies weak bisimulation equivalence. Then we have that the hennessy milner logic can be adapted to get a correspondence between weak bisimulation and logical equivalence. Weak dissimulation equivalence is the largest equivalence existing. All right, maybe this second point, I'll make another presentation on this. I think you look for the previous presentation on Hennessy Milner logic in this series. So let's summarize what we've discussed. We've discussed equivalence checking, checking two models to see if they are the same concept of internal actions or hidden actions or unobservable actions, which actually leads to non-determinism. So we have types of equivalence. We have trace equivalence, which actually exhibit 
different deadlock behavior. We have strong dissimilarity, which is called strong dissimilation equivalence, which is described as congruent or symmetrical, exhibiting strict deadlock behavior. And then we have weak dissimilarity, which is a variant of strong, but uh, not sensitive to observable actions without effect. All right, this is where I'm going to stop. Remember, if you have questions, leave them in the comment box below. If you have any topic you want me to treat, leave, the, leave it in the comment box also below. And finally, I would like to remind you, subscribe if you have not subscribed so that you can get more videos. But more especially, leave comments for anything you want me to discuss and be sure that I'm going to respond in just a couple of days. Thank you for viewing.